Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Supplement Your Homeschool Roundtable. Today, I have here with me Melissa Murr, Heather Human, and Katie from the Wolfpack. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Hello, hello. Hi. All right, I'm going to go ahead and drop a comment, and to, if you guys can tell me where you're joining me from and who you have joining us. This is going to be a fun roundtable specifically for homeschool parents. We're going to be talking more about the benefits of supplementing your homeschool and different ways that you can be able to supplement your kids' education. Looks like we have a few people joining us live now. Looks like we have about three or four people. Hi. Be sure to comment. Let me know where you're joining us from. I'm actually in uh, Utah right now. I'm usually in Idaho, but I'm actually in Utah, trying to escape all of the snow this year. <laughs> Is that possible in Utah? <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, uh, southern, southern Utah. Southern Utah. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so where are you guys joining us from? I'm in Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. We live in what is known as uh, locally the snow hole. Um, <laughs> so we 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 don't get snow. It's it's funny. You know, they'll get it all around us, even very, very close to where we are, but not not specifically our. It's like it's like there's a hole of, of snow around our house. So. Interesting. <laughs> But I'm actually no, from very close to where you are, Heather. Um, I'm from Northern Virginia in Loudoun County, but I've lived in South America in Ecuador for the past 12 years. Wow. Oh, and I'm in the middle of Kansas. So I'm like right in the middle of Kansas, right in the middle of the country. So I get a lot of snow, get a lot of everything. <laughs> Hi, Lauren. Thanks for joining us. She's joining us from South Dakota. <laughs> So we were just talking before we went live about kind of the different ways that you can supplement your homeschool. And a lot of that has to do with the core topics that you're teaching. That can vary state by state, but a lot of the core topics can be reading and writing, math, history, social studies, science. Um, depending on your state, it might also be art and music and language. So the way that I see supplementing your, hem um, your homeschool is being able to go beyond just the core topics and being able to further p different kids' interests or teach them additional skills that they that might not be a required subject, but is something that you are passionate about and you want to give your kid a well-rounded education. Uh, this might be forest school or creative writing, which ended up being a really big topic in my family. Uh, we all took art and uh, creative writing as kind of one of our core topics because it was something that we were all passionate about and our parents had a passion for. So it kind of ended up being our passion too. And we got all kinds of different ways to be able to incorporate that, whether that was doing the National Novel Writing Month or uh, writing a short story that was uh, for our different science studies, you know, uh, st short story from the perspective of a baby bird. <laughs> being able to incorporate these different topics into things that we were interested in. Um, and I think that a lot of that goes to what your kid is interested in what, and being able to supplement with unit studies on particular topics. You can learn reading and writing and math from a unit study on dolphins, if that's your kid's particular interest, or birds, which was mine. <laughs> so, uh, Heather, you were mentioning about how that kind of really dovetails with kids who are gifted or 2E, neurodivergent, how being able to supplement with different resources that fit their interests. I want you to talk a little more about that. Yeah, so like you, my daughter loves birds. Everything is birds. Um, she actually learned how to read um, by picking up a North American bird encyclopedia because like That's you amazing. do. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's like ways 
10 pounds. Um, she can't lift it still. Um, but um, so, yeah, I, I think that that's really important. And we tend to see this with, with kids who, who are gifted. Um, now I, I wouldn't say I got into a fight, but like a disagreement, a strongly worded disagreement with someone on on Facebook the other day um, who was not in our group, um, <laughs> who it was a teaching group, a right, you know, it's classroom teaching group. And they were talking about how someone made it into their classroom under the gifted program, but that they were they made it in under math and they weren't very strong readers. And so they thought that it was really unfair to them as a teacher because this this child was not a strong reader and I think that there's a big misinterpretation there about what gifted means um and I I think it's it's really important to, to sure share that story and share my experience because it, it really plays into a lot of what we do um Aurora, my daughter, happens to be, so far anyway, naturally gifted in a real lot of areas. She likes to give up easily. If something is is hard, she'll give up. Um, but if we push her, um, and, you know, I'm talking about like games and stuff, not like, you know, you better learn that math or something. But <laughs> like if, if she actually gets pushed to learn it, she like, man, she's like the dark horse, um, the ringer in games um, and things of that nature. So that is a little bit, <laughs> she's a little bit different in that way. Um, but she does have this special area of interest of birds. And so I tend to get her attention more if things are related to birds. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really important to like know what your kids are, are into. Um, because learning doesn't have to be like, well, you were homeschooled, Amelia. So I guess it doesn't have to be like it was for me. <laughs> um, I received a very poor education. Um, I was actually telling my husband about this the other day. Um, I was, I was in a school for um, K through K through five, I think we moved when I was in sixth grade and we were taught basically nothing. Um, my memories of it is we were rewarded with Jolly Ranchers, like if we showed up. <laughs> so, like, I don't have a very good foundation. Um, so we were like forced into things and like you had to read certain things, you had to do certain things, you had to do them in a certain way. And homeschooling gives you so much more flexibility to be able to supplement, um, you know, as your child is interested in certain things. And I think it's important to recognize that this is yeah. the gift of homeschooling. It does take initiative. So if you do recognize that your kid is obsessed with birds and it, they do need that push, that impetus to get started on math, if there's you know, as small as like bird clip art on the worksheet or whatever. You know, oh, I own works. bird clip art, my friend. There we go. <laughs> there, you've done it. You've, yes. you've, you've already done it. You know, and so it's, it's that sort of thing where you have to recognize it and then you have to do it. Um, and Katie, you were talking about diversifying in the classroom. And as former classroom teachers, we can kind of attest to that. Heather, were you also in the classroom? At I was point? not, but my no. mom, okay. um, I grew up in a, a household of, of public school of teachers. teachers. Yeah. So you know how this is. I mean, you've got, you know, I had gifted middle schoolers in a trailer trying to teach them Spanish. And it was, it was insane at, and trying to meet all the needs and keep them interested. It's difficult. But when you do figure out what sticks for each kid, you can. And Thankfully, we have the opportunity as homeschoolers to do that. Um, and, you know, for, for our family, at least figuring out ways to do that with, for example, foreign language. I've mentioned that we do bilingual homeschooling. And so we do pretty much everything twice in English and Spanish, but they also take French and being able to support them in that with these games that I make that are in English, French and Spanish we're able to then say, hey, remember that game we played in Spanish last week? We're going to do it again in French because tomorrow you've got French and you guys are talking about food vocab and we're going to play that. And they're like, yeah, heck yeah, let's do it. And so <laughs> if you've got competitive kids, if you've got kids who are ready to kind of duke it out and throw cards at each other, great, just do it. But it does take that <laughs> that extra you know, effort. Yeah. And I just want to add that like in defense of public school teachers, a lot there's a lot of good ones and they mm -hmm. want differentiate for every student, but it's impossible to do. I mean, you cannot, there's no way that you can do that, but as homeschool moms, we can. And so that's what I love. And okay. 
I am an only child. Heather, do you, you only have one too, right? I only have one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yes, it's easier to homeschool one versus Melissa. You have three, correct? Obviously it's easier to do that in some ways, although there's a challenge to it, but (laughs) you can do it as a homeschool mom. Even if you have seven homeschool kids, kids to homeschool, you can definitely obviously like literally like cater to their interests and be like, great, you're writing about birds. You're writing about Minecraft. You're writing about slugs or whatever it is. So <laughs> it's something that we, it's something that we get to do. And um, in order to really make the best education for them, we get to just like customize it and supplement with there's so, the problem. I think is there's so much to supplement with that's out there that can be hard to like select and then keep track of and everything. But yeah, I love supplementing stuff. I think that it it just it just adds an excitement and a personalized touch to it. And yeah. So speaking of personalized touch and making it more exciting, Katie, talk to me a little bit more about um, how you really like using supple- um, materials to be able to make curriculums more exciting and kind of fill in the gaps. Right. Yeah. So like I as you probably, if you've homeschooled for a day or 15 years, you'll know that there's no perfect curriculum out there. I mean, not there. It's just not, it does not exist. I get a little frustrated when somebody will be in a Facebook group and be like, tell me the best math. And I'm like, <laughs> tell me about your kid. But you know what I mean? It took me, it took me literally eight years to find the best math for it for us. So it's, you have to find the right curriculum, but even when you find it, it's not going to be perfect. Um, and so like, I love to, if it's something's just not sticking right, or it's not being understood, or it's too boring, um, or whatever, supplement with something else. There's so many options out there. I mean, just go to Pinterest and find a way to turn this math, you know, concept into something hands-on, or didn't like the writing prompt that was included in the writing curriculum that you're doing, Find something else that's more exciting. We did an out school class for a semester. And it was all writing about how to train your dragon. And he, my student, my kid loved that. And I'm like, fine, you know what? <laughs> we will keep doing the writing over here on like focusing on, you know, paragraph structure and whatever, but she's going to help you with, you know, being inspired about it. So <laughs> I, I love that part of it. And that's what like I create mostly is ways to like, take stuff of mine as a content creator and add it into what you already have to make it more exciting or to make it more fun or make it more, just more practice at something or, you know, I, and to me, that's what is so beautiful about homeschooling because you can't do that in the classroom. I mean, we wanted to, you know, but you can't do it with 30 kids or whatever it is. So I love that about it, homeschooling. It's been so encouraging to me to see so many, um, former teachers that are coming to the homeschool community and they're bringing all of their expertise and being able to talk to them. And they're like, this is so awesome. I'm able to actually do all the things that I always wanted to do, get me paid fair and be able to <laughs> customize these to each of the different kids. And so it's really cool to see these people who really truly have a passion for providing a really well-rounded education for kids and be able to have all the tools that they need to do that. and. So I I 100% agree. I think that that is a huge asset to the homeschool community, that there are so many teachers now and tutors and resources now available because, I mean, I come from a family, I had four siblings. And one of the things that frustrated my mom the most is other than like math, we pretty much didn't like any of the same curriculum. (laughs) Um, and she spent so much time trying to find the perfect history curriculum for me. And she did. And then only one other sibling likes that curriculum. So it's one of those things where there are so many different options out there. And so sometimes being able to take what you have, uh, and being able to supplement that with something to make it more interesting. Uh, you know, for me, it, for history, I really like story of the world. It's a, it's a starting point. So being able, she needed to supplement that with timelines and um, documentaries and eventually YouTube videos once that actually was a thing because that was fairly late in my education when that was becoming a thing. (laughs) Uh, But being able to incorporate all these other resources to make it so that this was the spine of the education that I was receiving, but that we were able to kind of go down different rabbit trails of interest and being like, oh, wow, I'm really interested in the seven wonders of the world. That's just this one lesson. So then we spent a couple weeks on that and went to the library and got books all about that. And so I think that there is a huge 
benefit, but like you said, there can be a lot of overwhelm if you aren't sure what your kid's learning style is or what their interests are. So do you guys have any tips for kind of sussing out and finding out what your kid's learning style is and kind of what their uh, big interest is? Because I know like some kids it's more common like dragons or dinosaurs and you know <laughs> or birds. Is birds common? I feel like it's not. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> Am I the only well, I one here not obsessed with birds? <laughs> I know Andy has a bird obsessed kid and I was a bird obsessed kid and you have one. So I guess I just confirmation bias. Like uh, around you, your world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your orbit. <laughs> I feel like, like art stuff. Like I ha I'm looking in my office at this little table that one of my daughters set up as her art studio. And we have a chalkboard wall behind it. It says the art center. Welcome. Come learn some <laughs> techniques. Come to me with your art questions. And she's bringing her siblings in and teaching them little things. And so, you know, that's lovely. That's beautiful. And that's their, their kind of fun time. But if I can find some way to include drawing in her book study that she's doing, some way to include art in her math. Um, hey, you can do like the quick version of your math today, but you need to represent it with some drawing next to it or in your notebook, um, grab something in there um, and be able to, to throw it in there. But that's the sort of thing that I think um, has, has been feasible, I guess, for us. And I guess one other thing that I wanted to mention was not necessarily interest, but ages and stages. Um, I've got some teen, tweens going on and the tween, the tween stage is real and they do not want to in their space. They might want to snuggle for five minutes and read and then they just want to be rid of you. And, you know, for, for us at least, that with writing, they don't want you over their shoulder. And so I found mm. a free tool in Google Docs. And so I'm on my computer at one end of the kitchen table and she's on the other and we're editing the same piece but it's oh, free yeah. and we're just co-editing at the same time. And so I, I made this into a class that I teach now and it's like asynchronous writing because it's such a, um, I don't know, efficient way of kind of doing an indirect writing instruction and being like, hey, look at that, that I just highlighted. What do we need to change there? And instead of just directly saying, hey, we capitalized the letters in the title like this. Um, you know, it's it's a discovery type thing. Again, leading into the gifted conversation of discovery, <laughs> freedom, and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think that that's really cool. And you do really have a point when it comes to uh, tweens. They want to be taken seriously. It's like they go from elementary where they want everything to be fun and silly to tweens being like, I want everything to be serious. And then I feel like teens can go like one of two ways. They're either like, I'm even more serious now. <laughs> I'm a real adult at, you know, like 13, 14. They're like, I'm I, I'm as adult as you can get. Or they're like, okay, actually, I changed my mind. I want stuff that's silly again. This is boring. And so being able to have different methods that work for different people um, at different stages. Because, you know, silly and fun classes really do work for the kind of elementary and under ages. And then, it's like, once they're, like, tweens or teens, they want to be treated like adults but they still are developing their brain. And so they're still learning and trying to kind of comprehend a lot of these more concrete topics. And so being able to make it fun, but not silly, um, that helps when they have like different interests and things like that, that you can be able to pull in. So I would say that my tips for finding out what your kid's learning style is, is to research the different learning styles, and then try teaching the same topic using different methods. So, uh, exactly for, yeah, and then whichever one you can tell really clicks with that kid. Um, for me and my siblings, we you could tell because we would be really excited to, if it was a documentary that somebody was like, they documentaries was their jam, they needed to set that visual presentation, someone talking them through it they would be really excited to share that information with someone else, with whether it was, um, you know, their sister or whether it was our mom. Um, I preferred writing assignments. And so if I had a chance to be able to do a writing assignment, that was what I was really excited about. And I would go off in my little corner and I would write all about it. And then that would be what I was really excited about. 
And my sister was more of an, my other sister was more of an artist. So again, similar to what you're saying, Melissa, if you could somehow relate everything back to drawing, that was really what clicked with her. Mm -hmm. I definitely wish I could have had all of this growing up because, um, yeah, I mean, how how I learn is I actually only just learned how I learn um, not that many years ago um, when we started our homeschooling journey. I always just thought that there was, I, I don't know, I just thought there was something off about me. Like, why did I have to work a thousand times harder to get the same grades as, as everybody else around me? And I think... Um, I think I just didn't really know how I learn. Um, but there also weren't the tools available that we have now. Like we didn't have audio books. Our parents didn't let us watch TV. Um, you know, like, so a lot of the things that we have now, uh, you know, we had like one computer in the house and my mom as the teacher, it was definitely hers, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, so like that, that was, that was pretty much it. Um, but I would echo what you said, like teach the same thing across the couple of different mediums. Um, and that, that is a winner. I, I really have nothing else to add to that. I think, I think that that's perfect advice. I, I want to add something you said, Heather. I think it's really important to know your kid's learning style, but you also need to learn yours. And I think that those are the two things, in my opinion, that you need to do before you pick any curriculum is you need to know your learning style and your students because you naturally teach in your learning style whether you know it or not, you're naturally teaching in your learning style. So like every time I went to explain math to my son, I just said the same thing over and over again because it made sense to me and it did make sense to him, but I was just repeating myself, right? And he's just like, I'm not getting it. So I had to like step back and be like, mm, it makes sense to me that way. It doesn't working for him. So then I had to step out outside my own comfort zone. And so you need to know what that comfort zone is first and then identify your students so you can compare them. And sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to teach in your learning style. I mean, sometimes you do. Like we can't always teach in our students' preferred learning style for every single subject because A, that's not going to be life. And B, it, that's just, it's just not going to work. You cannot expect your kid to draw if that's what it is, you know, every single subject, every single day, every <laughs> single assignment. I mean, it's just not going to work. Um, and you have to know what yours is too. And sometimes that's what you have to rely on. Um, so you need, but definitely need to identify both of those. So I think that that's really smart, Heather. Like you learned that. And definitely if you haven't taken a test as a homeschool mom as to your learning style and then done one for your students, you need to do that because it really helps you identify the right curriculum and then also how to best supplement for, you know, your student when they get stuck on something. Because even if you're like doing, like we do Saxon math, dry, boring, really good math, in my opinion, <laughs> really good math, but dry, boring, oh my word, so boring, so dry. Um, but if you get stuck on something, that's when you're like, oh, I need to go on Pinterest and find out how to find a hands-on, you know, whatever to teach this topic or find a video on YouTube or whatever it is. So like, even if you're sticking to something that may not be their number one learning style, when they get stuck, that's when you start searching for like, I need to supplement this because he's stuck and this is his learning style. This is going to hit him here and he's going to get it. So um, yeah, learn, knowing your learning styles is really vital, I think. And I think building up like a toolbox, where do you go first? YouTube, fantastic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> For us, it's a lot of Nearpod lessons. Um, it's, oh my gosh, what did It's what? Said? Nearpod. Um, so Nearpod is a free online tool. A lot of teachers in classrooms use it. Head to my YouTube channel, Katie. <laughs> it's not on there. Um, but it's, it's free, but they're interactive lessons and they're self-paced. So I can, we all, we, we use Google Docs a lot, can't tell. And so each kid has a Google Doc and I'll throw links in their Google Doc and say, you know, we're going to the Vivarium, the, the reptile house soon. Um, we're going to learn about vertebrates, invertebrates, and all the, the animal things you need to complete these four Nearpod lessons. Great. They go do it. And I don't have to do anything. I just look at the reports after. We'll go through if there's a problem, but that's a fantastic option. Um, another one, which is actually kind of hilarious, is the idea of, you know, a video. You brought up video, Amelia, like somebody who needs to watch a documentary or whatever. Um, I'm doing book studies with my two older girls right now, and we were going one of them did her comprehension questions and I created a book study on this book. And she's like, Hey, can I watch, she watched me like editing one of the videos that I 
that I put up for the course. And she goes, can I watch your videos? I don't want to go over this with you. I want to watch your videos. And I was like, <laughs> okay, sure. I don't, think, I don't know if I feel offended or if I feel like, yeah, like I'm glad this is a good, uh, we're getting our money's worth. I don't know, but like, um, you take my course and I'll just sit back here on the couch and sip my coffee. Um, but again, where do you go? Do you have um, you know, resources that you can pull from? Um, do you have a website that you go to? Do you have printables that you can just pull out? I know a lot of people don't love the tech. Totally feel you on that. Print stuff out, have it there. I've got like a random folder of stuff that I've accrued over, you know, seven years of homeschooling. And I'm just like, I think I got something in the mystery folder um, and pull it out. <laughs> Yeah, I would say, like, you know, there's, a, I mean, I'm sure if you've been homeschooling for more than a minute, you've seen there's bundles, there's printables, there's free everything, blah, blah, blah. And it's hard to keep track of all of that. So my suggestion is just to, as a content creator and as a homeschool mom is when you get those things, take it, download it right away, label it something that you're going to remember. Like if it's, you know, how to tell time or I don't know, whatever, or it's if it's like a holiday that you want to save for when that holiday comes, label it in a way that you're going to remember it and then put it in a folder that you're going to remember um, to, to otherwise, you know, you're going to miss it. And especially if it's something you paid for, like make sure that you, uh, you know, organize those things right away so yeah. that they don't go to waste. Not yeah. that I've ever done that. <laughs> Not from personal experience whatsoever. <laughs> I want to get every freebie ever. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Another uh, way that you can be able to watch documentaries and things like that is if you do have a library card, a lot of times they do have uh, streaming platforms that are specifically full of documentaries and things like that. So I know that my library card, I have access to like uh, documentaries and um, like old black and white movies and old cinema. Mm. Super fun. And it gives you access to that for free. Whereas usually you would have to pay like $30 a month for that access to that platform. So you would be surprised the things that your library card can get you access to um, beyond their catalog of documentaries that they might have. Yeah, Absolutely. I would add to that that I highly recommend Curiosity Stream. Um, it is so affordable. Um, I, I can't remember exactly what it was this year. It did go up a little bit this year, but our first year that we did it, it was like $30 for the whole year. And there is so much content on there. I have to say, I probably watch it more than than my daughter even does. I am I am obsessed. Um, but it's it's great for you know me pulling together my my own classes that I teach to other people's kids, and um, just really inspiring. They they have every topic you could possibly think of, um, and they're constantly adding new content. So um, I highly recommend that if you're into documentaries of of really any kind. More than birds. More, although they have a fair amount of bird content, and that is always the first thing we check when there's a new drop. So, oh my god, that's amazing. So, do you guys have any other tips that you guys wanted to share about supplementing home, their homeschool curriculum? Could I add one thing? I, I mentioned this before um, we started recording, but the idea of athletics or some other activity contributing to the well-roundedness of our kiddos. You know, the idea that, and the story that I shared was our kids did not have the opportunity to present or give, you know, presentations to groups of people. And that was something that we felt like was lacking. And so they hopped into karate and they have to do these competitions or presentations to move up a belt. And that has been huge for confidence boosting. And there's no public speaking involved, um, but that's something that we'll move toward. We just needed a little baby step toward being alone in front of a crowd and having to do something um, and perform something. So I think that don't, don't count out athletics or, um, you know, debate. You guys chime in with any others that you can think of, but um, debate, Model UN, um, whatever else. Young entrepreneurs. I was gonna say, FFA. I was going to say like, I mean, like, but yeah, like think outside the box. If you feel like your student is lacking in something, like I would never have thought, oh, karate would be a good way to like get comfortable in front of an audience. Like I would never have thought of that, but obviously that is the thing and it's working. And so like, like, don't be afraid to think, think outside the box. Like my son has always been, his thing has always been animals and he's an only child and he's homeschooled in a small Kansas town. So his social, you know, out, um, 
you know, availability is very limited. Um, he has a best friend who's also homeschooled and an only child. So they're just like, they're happy together. And that's it, you know? Um, so like, I knew I needed to get him like out into things. And so, you know, I had to think outside the box of like how to do that and where to go. And uh, which I know is not really supplementing curriculum, but like leaning off of what Melissa was saying is like, we ended up doing, it's an hour and a half away, but there's a zoo. And my son has interned there for four summers now. And, um, Never thought to myself he would become a phenomenal public speaker because of it, but that's exactly one of the huge things that they do all the time is they have to do these presentations in front of guests. And so, um, yeah, I mean, there's just so many different ways that you can fill these needs that you see that your kid has, or you don't even know they have the need mm -hmm. until you are into it and you're like, oh, we need to work on that. So, you know, <laughs> be aware and don't be afraid to think outside the box, like, you know, look and ask and, you know inquire so yeah i could probably do a whole video uh, roundtable on apprenticeships and internships and the benefits of that for homeschoolers mm -hmm. but it's a huge way to be able to and i think that kind of supplementing your education is more than and we were talking about this is more than the core topics it's debate it's presentation it's uh you know socialization it's life skills. There's so many different things beyond the core subjects that I think that there's so many resources in your local area that you have access to that cur curriculum creators are making available to you online. Uh, Nearpod, Curiosity Stream, there's so many resources available that you can take advantage of that's affordable, that you can be able to provide your kid with a well-rounded education um, that's customized to their interests. Yep. And uh, I was, okay, one more thing. So, like, my son yeah. is a senior this year, and so thinking about launching him into the world in just a few months, and it's like, oh, we need to work on that, that, and that. <laughs> and so, you no, know, like, there's that thing of you know, like, there's no behind in homeschool. I actually don't. I do not ascribe to that theory for a couple of reasons. But I'll tell you, at the very end, there is behind in homeschool. Blankety <laughs> <laughs> like, blank. He needs to learn it now. You know what I mean? And so it's like, um, you know, just be aware of all of those things. Not that like frantically, but, like just be aware. There is an end. There is an end that you have to like, you know, hope that you've taught him this, this, and this. And like, but, you know, teach those in a fun way and find a different way and whatever is going to work. Like, you know, find those things. So, yeah. Mine must be the baby of our group. She's, she's seven. So. Oh. <laughs> I and we only know homeschooling with her. Um, Me too. She, yeah, she was a homeschool or a homeschool, a COVID homeschooler. I we were, oh. um, yeah. Like I said, come from a strong public school background. This was my my mom was so adamant against this and thought I was insane, and now she's like making worksheets all week. You know, for when when my daughter visits on weekends, my daughter loves riddles. So my mom oh, is like fun. feverishly working away on like bird related riddles all week for like every subject. Um, so if anyone out there wants to make some money off of me, bird related riddles, my friend. Oh, that is I've got Roman candy. numeral riddles. I don't know. I'll throw a bird on there. I'll throw a bird. No, she wants them to like, to the Coliseum. like bird related puns that are, it's mm. like, uh, yeah. So. Um, the one other thing that I want to add that we've maybe danced around is don't be afraid to spend money <laughs> like, yeah. um, because there's only so much you can get for free and Absolutely. your time is also worth something. And Absolutely. that is as a business owner, long, long, long before I did any of this and in my past life, you know, speaking of like internships and stuff, if you were to Google my name, that is mostly what you will find about me. I, I was a writer um, for a lot of different publications, including Inc. Magazine and Entrepreneur Magazine about human resources and interviews and resumes and job searching and all of that. Um, so I have I have learned over time that that my time is is worth something. And so Pinterest is is lovely um, and all of that. But at a certain point, <laughs> like you might want to consider, you know, devoting a, a small budget <laughs> to to some supplements as well. Like I said, we've kind of danced around that issue. And I know that people love free and I love free too. 
Um, but sometimes it is easier to to find what you're looking for and it's already already been created by someone within the homeschooling community. I, I think it's great when we can support each other. Um, I personally like buying from from people that I, I know in our community whenever I can. Um, I think that that's that's a wonderful thing that we can do to to support each other, if nothing else. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Like I and we started focusing on certain subjects. We spent a lot of money on some subjects, which <laughs> means I have to spend less money on others. And that's where I have to work harder. But and obviously free does not does not always mean good. And I mean, it, I mean, just to be frank, I mean, we all know that you download <laughs> a thousand things that are not worth the effort it took to download it. So, you know, um, yeah, absolutely. It, I don't. I don't ascribe to the, you can homeschool for free either. Like, I mean, you can, it doesn't have to be necessarily expensive. I mean, we just did a whole yeah. magazine on homeschooling, <laughs> like, it, but it's true. I mean, there are yeah. tons of ways to save on homeschooling, but um, yeah, I think you definitely are going to, I think it's worth it to spend money on certain places. Absolutely. Totally agree. Well, there was somebody who was actually talking about the way that they budget for homeschool is they pick, uh, this is where my kid wants to go. This is easier when they're more of a tween or like a senior, you know, yep. they want to be an engineer. So yep. I'm going to invest in a much more expensive math yep. curriculum and, you know, science. And but I might spend a little bit less and spend a little more time. Because Really, you either have time or you have money. And so you have to figure out how what is the more important subjects to spend a little bit more uh, money on versus, OK, I can spend some time pulling together some resources or, uh, you know, I can pay for a fifteen dollars a month, uh, you know, course that's going to be able to take care of this for me. And Absolutely. there are some topics that you want to teach your kid. And then there's some topics where you're like, you know, history, not my favorite. You know? <laughs> uh, but that's you math know, maybe, for me. <laughs> OK. Same. Um, definitely on the math side of things, but maybe it's not your favorite topic. So you're going to um, reach out to someone who this is their passion. And so because like I know a lot of parents will talk about, you know, I don't like this topic and I don't want my kid to think it's a topic that just isn't fun. Yeah. I just dread this topic. And so I'm going to find someone and I want to find someone who has a passion for this Absolutely. so that mm -hmm. they can see that this this doesn't have to be a scary topic or a topic that's boring. It can be really fun. And right. so and there's somebody out there. There's somebody out there for that. I mean, every topic, every age. I mean, there's there's a solution to that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it it's what's really cool is in the homeschool community, you're able to support whether or not you're supporting a homeschool mom who made resources for her kids who's selling them to supplement her homeschool budget or if you're supporting a former teacher who teaches and tutors a bunch of kids wherever you're spending your budget you're helping other kids education and i think that that's just one of the coolest things about the homeschool community is that we are all in this together and i think that that is something that is really powerful about the community that we all have. Completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> so does, if anyone has any comments, go ahead and post them if you have any questions. Um, and I will be happy to answer any questions you might have. If you're watching the replay, go ahead and post a comment that you're watching the replay and I'll keep an eye out for any questions you might have um, when you watch the video. This also will be going on our YouTube channel in a couple of hours as well. Um, if you want to catch the replay on that, I will go ahead and post a link to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Melissa, Heather, and Katie for joining me today. This was a really fun conversation, and I really look forward to talking to you guys again on one of our other roundtables. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.